Joining me this evening for a quick chat uh, on the role of uh, divisional administrators uh, during COVID-19 is attorney at law Roshni Disanayaka, uh, the Municipal Commissioner of the Kalama Municipal Council. A very good evening to you and welcome, uh, uh, Roshni. Uh, starting off, uh, tell us uh, the role of uh, the divisional administrators because right now, as we speak, the limelight is on the health sector personnel as well as security forces personnel. It seems that the role of the division administrators have been stripped under the carpet. What is the role of the division administrators who are carrying out human service at present? Yes, divisional administration is doing a prime role nowadays to combat the COVID-19 and the ensure the service delivery to the country. Actually, the, the, the main focus of the media is health sector is obviously because the uh, in control of COVID-19, the health is uh, most important because the, it's a it has a life risk. So the people are waiting who are the recovered patients and the, what is the pandem uh, endemic situation in the country. So the divisional administration, so that it is well established uh, structure in Sri Lanka, so the, from the top to the bottom, so the, it uh, starts from the president and the cabinet and the ministers and the secretaries and it runs uh, up to the frontline officials. So the, all the service deliveries uh, channel is the divisional administration. Uh, right now, so the all 332 divisional administrations are working 24 hours. I personally know they are delivering their services 24 hours using the rosters and they're neglecting their personal risk also because the divisional administration cannot omit their uh, the accountability to the people, you know, the, all the people in the villages and the, uh, the ground level are the more touch with the divisional administration uh, through the frontline officials. Uh, Roshni, when we speak about uh, the uh, population in certain uh, areas, Colombo city limits is supposed to be one of the most densely populated areas in Sri Lanka. How has the Colombo Municipal Council been able to reduce the number of COVID infected patients uh, right now because as we speak the number of infected patients stands at 18 only one death has been reported from a densely populated area like the Colombo city limits well good question actually so the since the first patient reported in Sri Lanka so that the Chinese lady so we were we been the Colombo municipality we had a very lengthy discussion how to avoid it to penetrate to the city so the initially we took some measures so the first Firstly, we understand, so the, since it was not an epidemic by the time in January, so the enhancement of the immunity of the people was very important. And the, in our Ayurvedic department, we prepared a very a special traditional medicine and the, distributed among the citizens, uh, especially poor citizens in the Colombo municipality in the, at the free of charge. And secondly, we ordered the, we pre-ordered the, all the chemicals needed for the disinfectants and the hand sanitizers to having some understanding, some clue about the upcoming the pand uh, endemic situation. But we never thought this kind of uh, situation would arrive. But anyhow, anyhow at the, at the main uh, equipments, medical equipments also our public health department was managed to purchase very early to face the situation because you know the as you explained so the density population density is very high in Colombo so the and uh, most of them don't know immediately we close our slaughterhouses also so the people would uh, sometimes would be wonder so the Colombo beef consumption per day is 15,000 kilograms all the beefs come into the city out of the area, especially in the Putlam and the other out of area. Well, while you all have done a great service as far as the Colombo city limits uh, are, is concerned, uh, Roshni, there is also an allegation leveled against divisional administrators, that is uh, with regard to the distribution of the sum of the funds across the island. What is the reason behind this? While some of you are doing a yeoman service, while some of you are dubbed as the hidden heroes of Sri Lanka, uh, allegations are also leveled at certain quarters of the division administrators as well. What is the reason behind this? Actually, in this uh, divisional administration is uh, by, by the time so that there is some problem because the media is not giving much uh, publicity to them. But personally, I think it's because of the more focus on the health matter. So the 
COVID-19 is very serious health matters. So the, so the immediate action should be taken to control the COVID-19. So the many one is focusing on the only for the health sector. Otherwise, I don't think anyone is no one is neglecting the divisional administration because the majority of the people around the country is more touched with the divisional administration, especially so the Gram Nildari, uh, more than I think 12,000 Gram Nildari and the Samadhi Development Officers. There are many field officers around the country is working for the people and more specifically in the Colombo Municipality also the 7,000 workers under the Colombo Municipality, they are working. But uh, so the people are more focused on the what is the count of the COVID-19 and the, what are the deaths, uh, how the cremation is going. I think that is the more focus. Mm -hmm. So the, in some in some incidents, if the election is coming, so the, in the other disasters, the divisional administration is doing their role and the media is telling more about them. Um, if you could turn uh, towards me, uh, Roshni, but it's, it becomes much more personal for us to have a chat with regard to uh, how the things are moving across in Sri Lanka in terms of uh, the Columbus for Council. Now, there are many daily urge wage earners in the country as we speak who are dependent on uh, the Columbus for Council. What is happening to them? So we are using the daily pays workers for the especially for the drainage and the workshop and the uh, solid waste management so that we are delivering with limited services those who are engaged in no one is left behind actually they were paid because the even the government is giving some allowances to the, the every people we are not uh, we are, we, are, we have not neglected them they are paying but the same time they are delivering they are there. do you know that our workshop is also functioning for the essential services most of the ambulances from the id and the police vehicles and the, the people who are delivering their essential services on behalf of them we are continuing in the workshop also in the solid waste management and the limited operation in the dengue prevention control and the role of the daily paid workers are dis distributed among these services. They now are because of paid. COVID-19, Roshni, attention has now been focused completely on this pandemic and non-communicable diseases uh, have been left out of the window. What is the reason behind it? And I know the Kalam Municipal Council has a bigger role to play when it comes to non-communicable diseases like the Indigenous Medicinal Department comes under the CMC uh, as we speak. Yes. Uh, from January, we were continuing. We never close our. We have actually 21 Ayurvedic uh, dispensaries around the city, and 25 so the Western medicine dispensaries around the city. So the uh, none NCD patients are being the other being the clinical patients. They are getting their routine medicine for a one month period continuously. We never close. So the next upcoming next two days we are closing. It's obviously for the the holidays, but uh, up to the uh, after the 15 it is continuing because we understood. So the. NCD patients are more vulnerable to the COVID-19 attack considering the health instructions so that we never close down and they are getting uh, their free medication as usual. Uh, Roshni, uh, my final question to you is there were many stray dogs in the Karamba city limits uh, pre-COVID-19. However, now we don't see these stray dogs because today when I was driving from um, Raj Kariya to uh, the office complex in Colombo. I didn't see any stray dog. Now, what is the reason behind this? Uh, have they been uh, taken to the custody of the CMC or are they being fed by someone? What is happening to them? Actually, uh, they were fed by the Sri Lanka police and the, some uh, volunteer organizations. Uh, so the, according to the police information and the calculations, according to the CMC calculations, the, the old were not the real beggars. Sometimes they are very rich, rich than us. Uh, so the, the real beggars were identified and the, uh, so the, in the, I, I should say that in the control of the COVID-19, we are not working separately, the police and army and the whole health sectors. We are integrated with the Colombo municipality. We have good mutual understanding when we are delivering the services. So the police is doing, uh, feeding them. Thank you very much. Uh, that, of course, was uh, Roshan Sanaika, attorney at law, uh, municipal Com commissioner of the Colombo Municipal Council for joining us uh, this evening uh, on the show for a quick chat. Uh, I leave you tonight, as I always do, with a quote, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others.